Hello, welcome to today's episode of Black Sea Shipyards. Today we're going to take a look at the how to build and paint the galleons that just came out from Warlord Games. One of my favorite new models. Oh, when Warlord just announced they were going to bring out galleons, I kind of thought, well, I love the galleon look, it's great, but come on, that's, that's years before, that's a whole century before what we're playing in. And I didn't know they were coming out with rules for those older ships, which is great. But I did a little bit of digging, and turns out galleons were used all the way up through 1815 when they started to phase out. That puts galleons use right in the middle of our time period. Now, there are some galleons. The galleon design had changed over the centuries, literally two centuries. So there's a lot of differences between you know 1500s galleon and 1700s galleon. However, the galleons that were built in the 1700s, you know, were sticking around for quite a while. And there were even some built later in the 1700s, mid mid to later 1700s. Again, staying in service. They, there's a whole line of galleons called the Manila galleons, and they were designed to literally uh, allow the trade or make the trade possible between the Philippines and uh, Spain. And most of the galleons were Spanish. However, not all. Dutch had galleons, uh, you name it. If, if, if there was a country out there making ships, they had a galleon or at least one galleon. So, today I wanted to dive into kind of what I learned building and painting up the galleons. Let's make it simple and fun to get these new ships on the table quickly, but still looking sharp. Let's go ahead and take a look at the table. Okay, you know, confession here, I was so excited to build these things that I just launched right into the project once I got them. I didn't even think about possibly doing a video on them. So, you're kind of catching me mid-project, uh, but it's a great place to start. So, with the galley, I, I wanted to kind of take a different approach to painting. Uh, I decided to use the uh, Army Painter's new speed paints uh, to deal with the galleons. Now, I'm not going to switch to using them for all my ships. It's just I thought it would look really, really good for the galleon specifically. So, the very first thing I did, because uh, I'm going to start with painting, uh, is I went ahead and primed them all white, okay? Because I didn't want it to be too dark with the gray. I thought it would look best with, with the white. So once that's all dry, then went ahead and I started by liberally using, uh, painting the decks. And for that, I decided to use the speed paint, uh, hardened leather, okay? And hardened leather gives a nice, uh, when, you, when you don't put it on very, very heavy, it comes out kind of, you can actually see the difference between these panels here and the deck itself because I brushed over that to kind of take a, a little more of the paint off, the speed paint off, and gave me a really nice deck color that was a little bit, it's not as light as the my naval ships or my merchants, but it, it, in my mind's eye, it's what I was looking for. Something not too light and not too dark. Now, this one I haven't painted any cannons on, so this is, like I said, work in process. Um, then I went ahead, and on the outside, the entire thing I painted very liberally uh, with dark wood. Now, dark wood has the advantage of giving me, in one coat of paint, the two colors I'm looking for. The light color of the hull, and the darker color of, on some of the planking and some of the ribbing. It really, to me, this is what, in my mind's eye, the galleon looked like, right? Uh, I've looked at pictures on, you know, online, and some, not just of models or paintings, but actual, you know, galleon uh, exhibit ships, museum ships. And this is what I wanted. I went for it, and it worked. So this, perfect for me. Uh, after doing that, I went ahead and I painted, I made sure not to touch the figurehead with any of the speed paints, but I decided to make some different uh, figureheads here and color them differently. This is my Spanish galleon with the Spanish royal lion, which is what was used on a lot of the ships uh, 
in Spain. Now, it doesn't, not, not all the merchant ships necessarily had them, but it looks cool. And so I went ahead and used a, a gold. Now, in my particular case, I used uh, Vallejo's gold because it's a very bright color, and I, that's what I kind of wanted on this one. Uh, on this, I went with a white to, and this is one of this, one of the, I think the female figure that comes on it. And that figure had just painted it white, uh, as you would with an ivory or uh, painted, a white painted figurehead, just to give it some contrast. And, oh, sorry. Now this one I haven't painted yet because I haven't decided what color it's going to be. But on this one, I painted the figurehead white. Now she's one of the, the female figureheads. And I went ahead and just did a white, give it a good contrast. Now, the next step is to go through and paint all of the cannon. And I just used a black. It, it, pick your favorite black. It could be uh, dark gray uh, Vallejo. It could be Vallejo German gray. It could be Vallejo's, uh, or it could be a craft paint black. But don't forget the two cannons out the stern and all the cannons on, on the sides. Get those. There's only f six cannons in the actual uh, deck of the ship. It's up in this main deck. And that's all you need to do as far as painting cannons go. The next step is actually, for me, was kind of fun. Because uh, here's, once you've gotten all of the, the cannon painted, it really starts to take form. But now I want to make it pop. And now the way I made it pop, now I'll talk about the masts in a sec. But right now I went ahead and I painted all of the masts. Now here I cheated. I spray painted, primed all the masts gray to get a little bit of a different color than the main deck. And you'll see the main deck is hardened leather on white. The masts are hardened leather on gray. So they come out a little darker, but not as dark as the hull. Worked great for me. Uh, then I used my dark khaki, uh, link to the video up here, uh, for my sail, furled sails, as well as any of the rope uh, tying them up. Now, I should have done this before I mounted the masts, but for these two decks, terraces here, galleries, I went ahead and used a white paint. What I did is I did basically a dry brush of white. It didn't come out as clean as I wanted it to, but uh, it's still not, not a, it doesn't look too bad uh, on table length distance. So, but that's dry brushed white to bring out some of the ornamentation. And finally, what I decided to do was give it a nice color of red along the very top. Now, a lot of times these sections on a ship are either they're nice decorative panels or sometimes they're just a railing that is backed by a canvas, a colored canvas sheet. Now, either way, it doesn't matter to me which it is, but I wanted it to look like the recesses were painted or it was canvas backed and it wasn't just everything red so what I did is I thinned my a red paint down really really thin and just washed over it so it pool in those spaces between the posts and now I've got a really nice almost like a red stripe on that deck okay all right so once you get everything painted now it's time to assemble the masts. Now this is where things get a little tricky. First problem, I'm gonna, and this, this may be a problem for you, it may not, but I'm going to warn you right now. Uh, I, when I first got my kit, I picked up one of the main masts, and this is the condition it was in. <laughs> it is... I basically, just, as I picked it up, it just snapped. It, I didn't even, it wasn't bent uh, that I was trying, where I was trying to, you know, make it straight or anything. It just was that weak. Something had, it had, in packaging and shipping, had cracked. I think it's kind of a brittle material, and it, it just gave way. Just from a simple handling. Now, another one that I was actually, tr in this case, I was trying to straighten it out. Unfortunately, it too cracked in the same spot. 
So on both masts, uh, main and foremast, the joint right below the crow's nest, the bottom crow's nest, is in my opinion a weak spot. I, did, I have emailed that to Warlord Games to let them know that this is my experience. Now, it shouldn't be hard to pin because there's enough material in the crow's nest and in this mast where a pin maybe, oh, I don't know, maybe even, a number, it may still be a number 72. Yeah, a number 72. Uh, so 0.025 is, yeah, 0.025 pin might be the right size. Uh, you know, just a, a brass pin is probably all you need to put in there. But it shouldn't be that hard. But beware. I don't want you to be surprised if it happens. And of course, if you are not good at pinning, you don't have uh, the practice and skills, just let it, Warlord know. They're great customer service. All right. Next step. Uh, unfortunately, one of the problems with the galleon, all basically any of their resin models and their, uh, where they have resin model hulls and metal masts is when you put them in this is the four mast I think no this one is the main mast okay so when you put this in it it has way too much play now that's most likely because that is a very very small pin on the bottom so what you in all likelihood are going to have to do, and I'm going to have to do it on this one as well, as you can see, is I glued this one in with a, a gap filling super glue, and it's still wobbly. Is I'm going to put a little bit of green stuff in there, a small plug of green stuff, and then set this into it to give it some something more teeth. So when I do put the CA in, the super glue in, it'll have a little more to stick to and will stay upright more readily. Uh, all of the masts are exactly that same way. Now, a couple, couple cool things about this, and one thing I want you to try not to do is do not look at Warlord's pictures uh, on, of the Galleon on their website to try to figure out how to do, put, this, put the masts in. Because these masts are not the same as your regular you know, third-rate, first-rate, second-rate masts. Aside from the fact you got four of them. First thing is when you mount this bowsprit in, oh, that, that mounts so perfectly into a little hole in the, in the bow. It just, it just sets in there beautifully. You'll have no trouble getting that perfectly straight, lining it up right over the figurehead, and it'll look fantastic. At least I didn't have any trouble. But for the rest of them, you got you got to look at things a little bit carefully. You're not going to want to make, you're not, you don't want these masts, the first and third mast, the foremast and uh, main mizzen mast here, to be vertical. You actually want these to be slightly canted forward. And let me show you why. This is, I'm going to try to, let me zoom, the, let me rearrange the camera so you can kind of get a better picture of this. All right, I hope you can see this. Now, I want to show you something very interesting and I really like this because when you look at the old uh, if you ever seen models of galleons and you've looked at old plans and uh, even some of the old like arsenal ships or, or museum ships you're gonna notice that the, <laughs> the masts are not vertical they lean one way or the other and Warlord has actually modeled the mast properly uh, I, I, I don't want to feel sound like I'm uh, I don't like, or I, I have lack of confidence in, but I was surprised, in my opinion, they got it right. Take a quick look at the, the main, sorry, the front foremast. You'll notice it's angled forward slightly, but you'll also notice the crow's nests are level. Okay, and you can see the same with the main mast. Here is kind of a card to show the cant is there and as a matter of fact if you look at this let's try to that is the that's level
So there is an angle, and it's supposed to be because of first some reason when they designed those ships the foremast was leaning forward slightly the main mast was also doing the same thing and now in this mast it's almost vertical okay here's the card for reference it's actually leaning a little back but it's almost vertical and again look both of these crow's nests are parallel and then finally the rear sail is back. Warlord's uh, pictures on the site have this one almost vertical. All of them vertical. So you don't want to do that. Okay, so let's take, let's talk about this. When you mount them, I would suggest starting with the front and working your way back. You have more room to work that way. Um, mount that forward. And again, you may have to use a little bit of green stuff in the pocket to make it sit perfectly. Let it dry once it's completely dry and no sooner. Go on and do your set, your main mass. Again, get it the angle right so that it's leaning just a little bit forward let that completely dry and then work on this mask now this mask has a lot more play that's that's something I was actually pretty surprised at let me kind of show you what I mean here I'm gonna take this off for a second put this hull on and here is and this has a long pin at the bottom so there's plenty of purchase uh, as far as looking at the uh, actually looking at the you know how it would grip in there. But once it's in, if you just leave it, I mean it's got a lot of play. So be careful. You're gonna have to pull it back slightly to let it set right. Again, once it's completely full, or sorry, not full. Once it's completely set glues dry. Now you can go to your back mast. Now this one's the interesting one and again I'm, I love the way Warlord has designed these. They, they got some good attention to detail. Let's take a look at this mast. Take I'm gonna put this on. Now take a look at that bottom. You can see the way I'm holding it. Yeah I'm gonna be, make this, we'll have there. Now the bottom of the mass is parallel to the bottom of that sponge. Okay, you can see the angle of that pin. It's this is supposed to be mounted backward, you know, leaning backward, not straight up like this, like we're used to seeing. So again, lay this in there. But again, there's a lot of play, so you'll probably need to use uh, some green stuff because you can see there's a lot of play in that mast. And since it is supposed to fall backward, uh, it's going to go a little further than it's supposed to. So just play around with it. Matter of fact, what you might want to do is grab a pair of tweezers and simply hold down the mast as it's drying, so that it because it it's not much, but you don't want it falling all the way back. You want it a little bit higher. Now. You have to double check this. Actually, that nub might be a little too long. So I actually went ahead and I, sh I sh cut it down just just a hair with my uh, sprue copper sprue that sprue clippers, and that made sure that it nests. You can actually, when you look at the the model, you can you can see that it, there's some play. That means it's actually rocking on, sorry there, it's actually rocking on the, the pin. So the pin's stuck just a shade too long. You know, instead of clipping it, you might just want to file it down a little bit. Um, matter of fact, I have a little diamond file like this. And it's just, it's just a matter of carefully going through and filing it down just enough okay now it's still gonna fall backward but it should not have as much play as before I'm oh, sorry catching on the bottom okay but you should be able to find see it when it's setting in the 
in the mass, sorry, in the, uh, when it's setting in the hull, you should be able to see when the base of the mast is flush with the hull. Right now it's not. It has to go right there. So see, that's a lot of movement. And so once it's there, again, hold it, let it glue solidly, and then let go and you can do it. Once you've done that, you have this beautiful ship. And that's the way it's supposed to look. All right, now the biggies here, um, before you paint, one of the things you should do is, is actually drill out the channels uh, for where your backstays are going to go. But for these two masts, it's a very traditional type of backstay arrangement with the channels uh, right below it. Now, what's really nice is Warlord has provided us with very, very generously sized channels channels right here see there's they're very large and they're very wide this gives us plenty of room to use a number 70 or number 72 drill bit to drill in the back corner of each is to where you would actually run your backstay so instead of drilling into this the hull railing like you have to do on a lot of ships you actually have room on these channels to put your backstay uh, mounts. So just drill them out and you're good to go. Uh, we'll t again, in the next video, we'll actually go over how to do a rigging. Uh, not step-by-step -step rigging like I've done in my actual rigging series, but we're going to talk about how to do some of the rigging, some tips and techniques for the galleon specifically, such as where are you going to place your backstays here. But that has to do with a discussion about rat lines, so we'll talk about those in a separate video. All right, so hopefully that can give you some inspiration to start your own set of galleons. Uh, I've got one that's uh, basically painting up very generic. It's going to very be kind of a piratey kind of looking thing. Uh, I've got one for the Spanish Navy and then just a, or not Spanish Navy, Spanish Merchant Navy, and one for just oh, another merchant. Uh, probably, yes, yeah, probably still going to be Spanish because, well, I have Spanish fleet, so... All right, so I hope that was a useful video. Uh, stick with me for the next episode where we're going to kind of discuss how to go about doing the rigging and some tips and techniques there. Uh, if you want to take a pre preview, here's a couple. Uh, at the end card, you'll see some videos where it actually links to some of my series on doing rigging, and that'll probably help prepare you for what we're we'll talking about in the next Galleon uh, episode. All right, thanks a lot for sticking with me. Catch you guys later. Bye-bye.